Hi hey guys, this is Mark. In this video, I will talk about transaction operation chaining, which is an ability to connect multiple operations inside of the same transaction together, where the result of one operation can be used as an input for another operation. It happens quite often where uh, one operation needs to know what the other operation did. For example, when you uh, create an object, you want you may want to use that object as the parent in the subsequent operation that establishes relations because the API to set up relations expects both parent object and child objects. Or you may want to retrieve data from the database, uh, extract an object from the collection of the return data and modify something in that specific object or take the data out of it and store it in some other data table. So all of all of those examples are made possible because transactions in the candles can be chained together. So and, and this is what we're going to be focusing on in this video. So for this, let's start with a, with a few slides just to kind of set the set the, the the ground level for what the chaining is about, and then we will look into how it actually works with the APIs. So some basic rules for transaction chaining is that every single operation has some return value and that return value in backendless APIs, uh, both codeless and the ones that are available for those who work with code is going to be referenced as operation reference. So whenever you run uh, an API to retrieve data from the database or to create an object or run bulk create whatever, every single one of those has some kind of return value. For instance, the find uh, data objects or retrieve data objects from the data table, the return value is a collection of objects. Uh, to unify all of those uh, different types of return values, we're just going to call it operation reference. But whenever you see operation reference, uh, specifically in Codeless, just think about it, it is the actual value associated with the operation that you're referencing. And uh, uh, in multiple codeless blocks, as well as in the APIs that we provide, you will see that uh, operations that you are adding to a transaction may uh, or will have an argument for operation reference. And uh, in those cases, that's when uh, the that new operation expects to get the data from previous operation. And uh, it may sound quite vague, but once we start playing with the actual APIs, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, uh, in addition to that, uh, it, is, uh, uh, it is important to understand that in some cases, you may want to kind of peek inside of that operation reference. For example, if we take a look at the APIs such as retrieving a collection of data, find data objects in a table, or bulk create, they return a collection of data. Uh, and uh, other APIs may return a single object, like for instance, if you're using the create object API, that one just returns a single object. And in some cases, you may need to uh, go a further down, step down into the actual results. So for instance, if it is a collection of data, you may not necessarily need the entire collection. You just may need to take first object from that collection or second or whatever object. So you're sort of like peeking inside of that collection and you want to extract one and then do something with that object. So for instance, you run a query inside of a transaction that returns a collection of data. You know you want to get the first one and then uh, do something with that object. Likewise, for operations that return a single value, such as create object, update object, they return a single value, which is going to be the actual object. You may want to extract the actual property of that object. And uh, the example that we will be looking into uh, today in this video is where we will create an object in a table, then get the object ID and then store that object ID somewhere else in some other table. Let's say, for instance, for logging, logging purposes. That is a perfectly valid example. So in both of those cases, whenever you want to look inside of a collection or look inside of an object that is created as one in any of the operations in your transaction, then that element that you're going for is going to be called operation result reference. 
And uh, it is very important because to understand the difference between operation reference and operation result reference, because they are going to be quite different. But uh, the rule of thumb is operation reference is the actual result that operation returned. And operation result reference is whenever you want to peek inside of the operation reference. So with this, that's going to be um, kind of the ground rules. Now with operation result ref reference, I do have a kind of quick demo just to visualize it. So so to solidify the knowledge uh, that, I, that I just was sharing with you. So for instance, with find objects, it returns a collection of data. So this is operation result. And then let's say if we want to take reference one object in that collection, and that object is going to be operation result reference. So now you, you see the difference. Similarly, if, uh, if we want to look inside of a specific object returned by an operation in transaction and extract the property, that is also going to be operation result reference. So whenever we look inside, that's operation result reference. So with all of this, let's uh, work through a couple of examples so you can see exactly how it works with Backendless. I'm going to switch to UI Builder now. So now in UI Builder, uh, the first example that we will start with is already there. It is a page that if you follow this course along, you create it as a part of the transaction overview lecture. And uh, I don't remember, we can quickly take a look just to see what that um, uh, page template is. If you go into uh, creating new page, select marketplace, and there's going to be a lot more that you see here because I'm logged in as a, with kind of a special permissions. So there will be a bunch of others. So here it is, lecture 44. If you create a page from this one, then you will get this page. So here, once you have this page, select the save order button and go into the logic for that order. What you will see here is the logic for creating an order and establishing relations with that order with other tables. By the way, uh, just to give an, an additional perspective on what we're doing, let's take a look at the schema. I think that would be rather useful. So here with the schema of the order, and we'll use modeler, you will see that the single order uh, may reference a customer and a product. So the, the logic in the transaction that we will be creating or that is already there, we will be reviewing is we will save an order and then link that order to a customer and then link that order to a product all within the same transaction. So let's see how that works just to understand how the chaining effect is implemented for that specific example. So here in the codeless logic, we create a transaction and then the transaction is stored in the transaction variable. The reason we stored it in the transaction variable is because we need to reference this transaction again in this add operation to transaction block. And then again, in this run transaction, uh, we simply return from this function, but in this function, we basically return this transaction variable. So whenever you create transaction, save it in a variable. Now, the actual flow of this transaction goes like this. First of all, there is a create operation. This is where we create a new order. Notice that in this create operation, we selected return operation reference. And then whatever this block re returns, we put into a variable called new order. So this variable new order now stores operation reference. And technically, it is the actual order that is created. But uh, I'm saying it's technically it is, but it really is not because everything's running within within transaction and the, the back, backendless server will just figure out, you know, where the actual order is and it will do some magic there. But from our perspective, whenever, whenever we lay out this logic, it is easier to think that this is going to be the actual order. Uh, if you're going to start kind of, you know, adding logic on this order by retrieving object ID and whatnot, it will not work because it's sort of like a wrapper around the actual order that is created on the server side whenever this transaction is running. But anyway, let's see what we do with this new order. And what we do is in the subsequent two operations, which is set relation. And in here, we're setting relation with the customer. And then in here, we're setting relation with the product.
Notice that the parent object is that operation reference. So we're basically passing this new order as the parent, both in here and in here. And then the rest of it is going to be the same thing as with set relation API, where we specify table name, we specify column name, and the actual collection of children to establish the relation with. So here it looks fairly simple because we stored operation reference and then we're just using it uh, in subsequent operations. So that's quite clear. So now let's do something different. And uh, uh, what we are going to do is um, a, uh, an example where we will retrieve an object and then we will modify property of that object in, a, in another uh, transaction. And for this, I will just create a new page and I will call it transaction chaining. That already exists. I'm just going to use a dash to make it look different. So now we have this transaction chaining and let's add a button in here. Let's see, here's a button. And then whenever this button is clicked, we will run our example. So what will that example do? Let's just come up with a scenario. So if we go to the back end and take a look at our order, what we can do is uh, grab a uh, an order. For instance, we will take an order that has this discount 6.47. In fact, let's see if there is only one. Actually, it doesn't matter. We will just grab all of them that have discount 6.47 and we will update that object to set the discount to be 10. So that's going to be our example. Kind of silly. There may be simpler ways to do this and I will talk about what that simpler way is. But my goal is to demonstrate how the chaining uh, in transaction operations works. So back in UI Builder, we will get to our button and start adding the logic. So here's the button, switch to logic, and in the on-click event, let's start building our transaction. So we, whenever you build a transaction, it always starts by dragging create transaction. We'll create a variable that is called my transaction, for instance, and uh, set this variable to the transaction, then we add operations and let's not forget that we will need to run this transaction and here again use the variable in here and then the same variable goes in here. So now the kind of the framework for creating the transactions is there. So now number one, we want to run a query to get all the objects where the uh, from the order table. And then the query is going to be, let's add the uh, text. And then the query is going to be discount equals 6.47, I think. So that will return a collection of all the orders where the discount is 6.47. Now, we want to get the first one, let's say, from that uh, collection and update it to 10. So for this, we need to get a hold of the operation reference. So now click this checkbox, return operation reference. Okay. And for the, and then we'll create a, another variable. We'll call it orders and we will set orders to this block. So now the orders variable contains a collection of orders where the discount is 6.47. What we want to do is to retrieve the very first one from that collection. Uh, once again, it is a silly, silly example. And then what we will do is in the transaction APIs, we want to run the update operation. Okay. So the update operation is going to be actually, how about we update all of them? In fact, this is going to be a good example of using this block. Let's pause this video for a second. And this is the first time I'm actually injecting something that was not part of the original recording. Right at the second, when I'm dragging this update operation into the transaction, I'm making a mistake. And I will discover that mistake, as you will see later on in the video. Uh, the mistake is that I want to update all orders returned by the collection and the block that I dragged on dates only one object. So here, if you are following along, I just want to warn you that there will be an error that you will be running into and that I ran into, and that will be corrected a little bit later 
in the video. And I wanted to apologize for this. All of the videos are recorded uh, without uh, a strict plan. I kind of have an idea of what I'm going to be talking about. And of course, I prepare slides and run some demos. But as far as building logic, it's kind of on the fly. Uh, they just come out more naturally this way. So uh, this is just a heads up that right at the second, I dragged wrong block and uh, it will be discovered a little bit later. So here it is, update operation. And notice that it has previous operation reference. Previous operation reference is going to be this guy. So let's get a hold of orders. Okay. And what, what this does is that we take all of the objects that were found by this operation, and now we're doing an update. And what we want to do in the, our update is going to be in the changes connector, and that will be an object. And in here, we will say discount property we will be setting it to number as we said 10. okay so that and that's operation changing right there so as you can see update operation relies on the result from find operation remember when i said that this can be done simpler it can be but uh Again, this was done for the demonstration purposes. A simpler way to do this would be to go into Transaction API and look into bulk update operation. And then bulk update operation that takes the where clause, like for instance, this one. So with this one, if we go into orders and we use this where clause, where, and we take this object, this. So this block right here, by itself does the same thing as all of this logic right here so there is a simpler way to do what i'm what i'm talking about but my goal is to demonstrate how chaining works and uh, now if i run this page and uh, in fact let's open up network just so we can see network traffic in case if there are any errors click button so here's our uh, request and we actually got an error and let's see it says unable to perform update due to argument incompatibility the operation references result from another find operation the referenced result must be obtained using a reference result to result index and prop name there you go so this tells me is uh is this doesn't work so why does it work why does it not work it, the reason it doesn't work is because update operation requires a single object and what i did is i passed in a collection of objects what i was what i meant to do is to get the bulk update operation this one and i use just a single update operation so what i will do is i modify this just to show how to extract one and update only one and then i will modify it again just to update all of them now how do we extract a single object from the orders? Well, for this, if we go into transaction API, what we need to do is get operation result reference. Okay. So the operation result reference requires operation reference. Okay. Operation reference is going to be orders. And that's going to go into right here. And then what we need to do is to extract index. And the index is going to be index 0. I think it is 0, but we will find out. So I'm going to be taking first object from all of the orders that, it, that we found, where the discount is 647. And that's going to be our operation result reference going into the update operation. So this will update just one object. I'm kind of glad we ran into this error just so you can see, you know, uh, why it didn't work. It is always good in lectures to show errors rather than when everything's working perfectly because it gives you an idea how to debug uh, whenever you run into some problems. So now with all of these changes in place, let's rerun our page. I'm gonna clear the log and then run this button. So here's our unit of work. Now you see the error is null and we got the actual result. So what this means is that if we go back to our backend, then this 647 really should become 10. And it did not. So let's find out why not. 
in here in the update discount is 10 and we probably just updated some other object now the object that we updated we it was this one so so by the way this is how you can see the actual result so this there, there are two operations find order and update order so the find order returned these objects and there are five of them we got the first one and uh, here this object id is 14022 and if we go back to our backend and we say object id equals 14022 i think it requires quote as you can see the discount here is 10. okay so our transaction did exactly what we intended to do the thing is that uh, there are more multiple objects with discount equals 6.47 and uh, in fact these are the ones that are left and we modified only one of them now as i promised we will modify this logic to update all of those orders and set the discount to 10 and let's see what that would look like what we will do is we will use the bulk update operation let me find that the one that takes previous operation reference right here this guy so and this will use previous operation reference orders and then the, these changes so remove this so now this is the logic that is in there we run the query we uh run bulk update on all of the orders that returned by the query and they are referenced through the previous operation reference and then apply the change with the discount equals 10. let's run this page there is log run the transaction there are no errors and then in the results we see that this is the result of the find it re it returned three objects and this is the result of our operation that updated three objects and i'm kind of getting ahead of myself because in the next video we will talk about how to get the results from the transaction so now if we go back to the database and run the query of discount equal equals 6.47 there are no objects that match the query however if we run a query discount equals 10 we're going to get more of them actually there is a bunch and then some of them were updated by our transaction so here in this demo i demonstrated how to retrieve a single object from the collection and use that in the subsequent operation and i also demonstrated how to reach how to use the entire collection and use it in the subsequent operation another demo that i wanted to to run is uh, let's say we're going to save an order once in the transaction once it is saved we're going to get the saved order object, extract its object ID that was assigned, and store that object ID in some other table, just sort of as a log. Again, kind of silly use case, but there, this use case may be present not exactly in these terms, but when you want to save something and then create a record of that somewhere else in some other table. So for this, let's create a new table, and we will call it orders log and then create a column here, uh, order object ID. The reason I pre-created this table is whenever you run a transaction and when, when you need to store something in the database, all of the tables, all of the columns need already to be there. They are not going to be created dynamically, even if you have dynamic schema definition turned on. By the way, I think this is the first time that I mentioned dynamic schema definition in this course. And this is really a feature that gives you an ability to um, modify your schema on the fly. We will talk about it separately. There's going to be a separate video on this, but let's just, let's just say that whenever you run transactions, tables and columns need to be in there. So now we have orders log, order object ID column. So let's add another button to our page and uh, in that uh, behind that button there's going to be this logic that will save an order and let's let's just start building that transaction so here let's just create transaction again create a variable my transaction set this variable to the result of this 
and then bring this guy into here and uh, finally run this transaction. So we're kind of creating our little framework of running transactions. And let's start populating it with logic. So the very first thing that in our transaction we will do is going to be create operation. So this create operation will create a new order. And uh, let's set up this order. And uh, there is going to be a column discount. There is going to be a column uh, total. And uh, I think that should be sufficient. Just two of them are going to be plenty because that that will constitute a valid object. So discount is zero and uh, total is, let's say, 100. OK, so now what we want to do is this object is created. We want to extract object ID of that created object inside of the transaction and store that object ID in some other table. So for this, of course, we need to check return operation reference and create a variable that we'll call new order. We will set new order to this block. And the next thing that we will do is we will create another object with the object ID of that new order stored in our orders log. So here's how it's going to work. Transaction API will we'll locate another create operation. It's going to go into orders log. Now this object is going to be interesting. So in this object, we know that we're going to have a column called order object ID. All right. So now the question is, how do we get the object ID from this new created order? And the answer for this is this get operation result reference. So since we want to peek inside of this newly created order, we have to use operation result reference connected to here. And now we need to reference the actual operation that um, that returned that value and we basically provide operation reference. And in our case, it is new order. So variable new order. In fact, in this case, just for the uh, for the semantics uh, uh, case, it's going to be better to call it new order reference. So it updated everywhere, new order reference. And guess what? What, the, what is the property name that we want to uh, retrieve? It is going to be object ID. And that's what we put in here, object ID. And that will do it. Now this block, it's kind of versatile because as you can see, it has both index and property name. The cool thing about it is that if you're looking inside of a specific object, and you want to get a property, use property name. If this reference is a reference for a collection and you want to get specific object from that collection, use index. That's it. Now let's run this page. Here's the clear the log, click the button. Here's our uh, request. There are no errors. And if we go back to the database and take a look at the orders, log now we have a record here and this order object id is the object id of the order that we created with our transaction in fact if we go to order and we say object id equals this value then this is the order that we created in our transaction as you can see we saved an object in one table it was saved we retrieved the object id and saved it in another table and all of it was done inside of a transaction using the chaining mechanism in backendless transactions APIs. This is it. I know this one is probably by far the most complex lecture that uh, we've, we've done because this topic is quite complex, but it is super powerful for applications with a lot of traffic, with a lot of concurrency, with a lot of users going after the same objects transactions is the key and chaining is the is an absolute must have must understand kind of concept that you need to use whenever you build transactions thank you for watching this video guys i hope you found this useful and as always happy coding